Hello, hello. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Good, sir. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. And what a beautiful morning it is. Agreed. Uh, it's been a while. <laughs> it has. Definitely. It's... A lot of things have happened since we last spoke. Yeah, absolutely. There has been. To... And how have you been in that, that, uh, that long period of time since we last spoke? Been fantastic. Good. Any uh, new projects on the horizon for you, Damien? Well, I'm in the process right now of finalizing the Villains training program. I have several layers and degrees built into it. I'm very, very detailed. And um, definitely this will be part of a of a, a different system, a different style of system here. So what's really interesting is in the meditations and the activities in which I perform to validate my uh, accuracy on some of these details have in, increased dramatically. They've improved and upgraded uh, based off this system. So I know that this system is very, uh, it, like it, it's it's very sound because I'm getting a lot of energy out of it, so I want to share it share it that way. And then the second part is that you and I are creating this movie on yes, based on time travel. Yeah. Yes, so, we are. And you've been writing the poems. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect timing. Yes, absolutely, it is. Um, <laughs> no, what's uh, curious is that uh, you. Apologize for the sirens. So. No, 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 no. That's perfect. Dude, that's, it was right on time. Yes, it that's, was. That's so incredibly awesome that that just happened. The serendipity of it all that we talked Absolutely. about with the last experiment. Yes, for sure. Uh, so the uh, we're in the process of character development right now for, for the movie. And if you don't mind me uh, revealing uh, the first character that we're working on. Please. And... Uh, the first character that I'm working on is is Uranus, and uh, for for those of us who follow uh, uh, the history of of the uh, great sky god Uranus, is he's also known as Odin. Mm-hmm. And the uh, one of the ways in which to, uh, to and praise, Anu. sorry, yes, and, and Anu. with the with the Anunnaki, right, an L, um, and he's. Uh, Uranus also has, uh, even just within uh, Norse and Viking, well, excuse me, Viking is a derogatory term for, for people of Norse de- descent, is that there is at least a hundred and some odd names for him just within that culture alone. So he has many, many names. Uh, but one of the ways to praise Odin is through poem. And he enjoys poem. So uh, it's very, very fitting that we are writing a poem within this movie, um, and that being our first character as as, uh, as Uranus. Can I add to that? <laughs> Please do. For those who want to be a part of making this movie, if you're listening to this now, you're more than welcome to be a part of this because this movie is going to be very unique because it's almost like a choose-your-own-adventure. So we're building the characters now. But the people who get to play the game and be a part of the movie get to decide what happens and what adventures that these characters go on. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one aspect. So you're welcome to join us in creating this. We're going to create all the different ones through the body and harmony system. Now, Uranus, Uranus is like the in in this game and the movie that we're creating because it's a game and a movie. They go together Mm -hmm. in this uh, game and movie. Uranus is like the Aurora Boris, the snake that eats its own tail. Yes. And in today's understanding of the gods, we have um, Uranus is actually Thanos in the Marvel series. So that gives you an idea of the character type in which we're currently creating. Now, how we're organizing it within the game is Uranus is also designated as the color white. And the, and the key in which opens the door to Uranus, if you're part of the hero training program, that key is called Offering. And then you learn through Elemental Hypertech, the game and the movie, that what Offering really means, because you have a connection, you build a rainbow bridge, and that rainbow bridge is hued in white 
to Uranus and uh, the and then the villain's training program, the key that accesses Uranus, we call pride. Yes. So I just wanted to share that little uh, little fun fun fact for this movie that you can be a part of if you want to help create it. If you find this interesting, now just to be clear, I, I'm a teacher of time travel, and if that's a subject that's interesting to you, and you want to be a part of creating this movie based off time travel and this game based off time travel. Please come join us. Let's make something. Let's create something. Let's direct it. How curious that you mentioned time travel, Damien, because today's podcast is a number eight, mm. and the number that is associated with time travel is the number eight, the Mobius strip. Correct, in the infinity symbol. But the Mobius strip is a much better example of infinity mm. of the eight. So I was um, curious to know whether or not you would like to kick off this podcast of uh, aliens, angels, and pirates uh, within the theme of time travel. Sure. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> so uh, the first thing I want to, I kind of wanted to dispel some some myths about um, the uh, the aspect of time travel with you, Damien. Is that uh, when we first uh, we are first taught or programmed into believing what time travel is, is that it requires machinery and it requires um, some massive uh, team of scientists working within uh, quantum physics in order to uh, in order to create time travel. And that um, there is some DeLorean somewhere with 88 miles an hour <laughs> in order to transport us back into time and there's paradoxes and there's all these other different elements that uh, that make us believe that time travel is in fact not possible however we have different theories in regards to time travel and what that might be and one of them being is that we are all capable of doing so that is correct without the use of external apparatuses or somebody to tell us that you have to come through me because I'm your toll booth, I'm your your way to get this done. You have there. You don't need any external savior to get you to do something. You can actually have access to this technology with if it's real. You is open. This is an open source world in a sense. If it's real, you can do it without the use of external assistance. Uh, that's, that's a very revolutionary thought, Damien. Is that the fact that we are all capable of time travel because. Um, the way that we have been taught about time is that uh, we exist in one moment and um, our past is done. There's no way that we can go back to our past and there's no way we can propel ourselves forward to the future uh, because this is the moment. Uh, we're part of, that, is, that is true to some, some sense. However, um, with the invention of the calendar and of the clock, uh, we believe that um, we are ruled by time with it being shackled on our wrist in the form of a watch and being hung about our face on the wall in the form of a calendar. <clears throat> and those two um, apparatuses play a very crucial role into this. However, there is a way, and we are in control of, our own calendar and our own time systems. Would you like to expand upon that, Amy? Sure. Uh, you, you have a body rhythm. That body rhythm is consisting of several parts. Uh, one is emotional, one is physical, one is mental, right? You have these different, and one is actually intuitive. Now, each one of these actually harmonize in our bodies in a time matrix. And there's, there's a trinity to that time matrix that we would consider to be you know, past, present, and future. But each one of those aspects are actually built in such a way that they are, they seem to be in opposition, yet they are still in harmony. So here's an example. The element of air, the mind, is actually connected to your past. It's where I remember when. You can pull information from our past because it is, um, it has happened and what we would call fixed in time. So that way, we know exactly where we left our experiences. So we can always go back 
and access that. It's almost like everything's being recorded and the spiritual sciences call this the Akashic record. And we have access to download information, to access that information through the Akashic record. And we have a needle in which we access that called our intuition. And our intuition actually comes from our heart. And how that works is we're able to derive the right answer based off the processes of our body using intuition. So we get the right answer every almost every single time. It's like knowledge that comes from nowhere. So the mind, the past, has to have some type of relationship with the heart, and the heart is in the present moment, not in the past. It's in the present. This is the ever-present now. The ever-present now is the sum total agreement with all things, past, present, and future, that this is reality. So this is like what we are living in every moment by moment is the ever-present now, the singularity of all of creation. So this is how in it, in it it reveals itself in truth in all that we see around us colors vibration electricity magnetism the ethereal the physical all these this these apparent dualities and the reason why they're apparent dualities is because you also have the gut and the gut is connected to your future and that is your where your emotions and your feelings are. And the future is actually mutable, it means that you can change it. This is why we consume things, we use like a factory, and then we spit out something new, something different. And this is this is because the future is changeable and mutable. Where the heart is cardinal, it's it's um it's the dynamic and the the dynamo itself, the gyroscope, that that which moves, that you know the motion and then the mind is the fixed the stable the static the the permanent as well because it's already been been done so this is the three different aspects of time how you access each one of these and then your body your body is that instrument tool or weapon depends on how you use it and to to travel through time and everywhere around us there's this color matrix simulation matrix and harmony matrix that responds to our interactions with it so there that's how time travel works within the elemental hypertech matrix that we're discussing here the uh you mentioned uh the balance point and and reality and i'll just kind of touch uh for the people who are listening at home uh, how the system works within a numerological standpoint because I'm a big fan of numbers um, and if you were to write on a piece of paper um, going in a, a vertically downward um, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 2, 3, 2, 1 and on the other side um, vertically from top down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 the numbers that meet in the middle are 5 mm-hmm. 5 by 5 and that is that is the balancing point uh, between all numbers and if you look at the five it is a mixture of both uh, masculine and feminine agreements with the okay. angle of the top uh, being the masculine and the curve at the bottom being the feminine correct <clears throat> I hear you loud and clear five by five <laughs> we also have the law of five yes my, one of my favorites <laughs> kind of a mystery to us all because uh you know you state that the law of threes right so uh, karmic effect uh will come to you back times three uh, but there's also a law of five which i don't quite fully understand but i guess apparently everything happens in fives so. yes <laughs> like your hands look at your hands how many yes. fingers do you have oh uh well some of us have six like the six year <laughs> band from the princess bride but i in fact have five uranus <laughs> yes <laughs> so the Eggers in system. Yeah. So it's a very important number. Think think of it this way. Think of the five part of the Fibonacci. How things get multiplied. So Fibonacci is one plus one is two, two plus one is three, three plus two is what? Five. Five. So there's a there's a harmony built into that that is part of the infinite nature of our reality because our creator's language is partially mathematics, right? The other part is na- is nature, is life. And then the third aspect of that would be love, right? Which is what people don't really, they get uncomfortable when we talk about that. Right. But 
but so this is the, the five is part of that Fibonacci, which is in the Bible. If you're into the religious side, because everybody has their own filters and narratives in which they participate in the world. And if the Bible is your part of your filter, so then you have what is called to be fruitful and to multiply and the multiplicity of what is being described is the Fibonacci, the infinite number that cannot be quantified it goes on forever we don't know the end of it and then the other side of that the feminine which is to be fruitful that is the uh the magnetic feminine passive aspect and that is pi you know 3.14 on to mm -hmm. infinity as well we no computer no nothing can never get to the end of what pi is because it's also a reflection of our world saying that there is an infinite component to our reality and you can access that infinite component to our reality using the number five because five is the balance the agreement point so if you know the extremes in other words if we knew the ends of the universe we could plot and track using that fibonacci that five to to move ourselves in time or space because space is part of uranus time is not part of uranus but space is okay. that is what encompasses it now saturn is time because saturn is the physical the body and that's how you access time so we haven't got into that character development yet but space is uranus not time that's, and then, that's so curious that you mentioned that uh damien because within the exploration of of uranus um, Uranus was was tracked and defeated by Kronos, which was an, uh, which was the embodiment of time. Because mm -hmm. it's the opposite nature. It's without those two, they have they're they're actually in direct opposition, but also in direct harmony with each other. They're actually one side of the same coin, mm -hmm. and then we all exist in the middle in between that. So Uranus is white, the top of the head, or if you're part of the villain's training program, Uranus is white, the feet. And then um, Saturn is black, the feet in the uh, heroes training program. And then Saturn is black, the top of the head in the villains training program. So you switch them, and this is th this is the um, this is a flavor of what you'll be understanding as part of this movie and this game on how those two are in opposition. Because one's the one's physical, one's the material, which is Saturn, mm -hmm. and the other one is ethereal. The spiritual, which is Uranus. Right. And so within the villains training program, we'll have the opposite, whereas uh, Uranus is the material and Saturn is the ethereal. Correct. That's that's correct. That's how, when you get to the advanced levels of elemental hypertech, you learn how to interchange these pieces, like a puzzle piece, to create new forms of matter. Um, this is because I'm the inventor of programmable matter in a sense with the, the meditation plates. That's how you program, you know, how you work it. So these, th this will play a role. And then also other technologies as well play a role because of Uranus's, um, uh, how, how you build it within your own life structure. Cause it's part of the body system, a body harmony. So you start at the top of the head with white, you go to purple in your senses, your senses are critical with understanding elemental hypertech and that is the color purple which is the sun that's what represents that you have neptune in the throat which is blue you have venus in the heart which is green you have um yellow in the diaphragm which is jupiter you have orange in the gut which is mercury you have red in the generative uh the genitals area that's priority and then we take it even further if you're part of the advanced elemental hypertech system you have brown which is the the buttocks and leg, top of the uh, thighs, which is Pluto. You have the moon, which is your shins, and that's the color gray, Pluto's brown. And then at the feet again, you have either Saturn or Uranus, and Saturn is black and Uranus is white. Now you mentioned the colors, and and I think we're, we're, this would be a great segue into what we're speaking about in regards to time travel. Um, one thing that I, I, I thought was just absolutely magnificent was your discovery of how the colors work in our everyday world um, we noticed that while we are driving um, we are directed upon a path within our um, within time with uh, the system the controllers here they they have stop lights and and stop signs and and uh, we have on ramps and off ramps and white lines and 
and black roads and these are all colors that are that are noticed and found everywhere in the world and, and there's a reason for that is because that is how they control us in time the, uh, correct the uh, white lines in the road being white um, offering the black of the road being control saturn uh, we have the red light or the stop sign the octagon that's red that's priority um, that is Mars. Uh, we have uh, the green signs, which point us to to, to nature. <clears throat> and you describe that as what's service. The word? Service. Mm-hmm. It's like a service road. Yeah. Like we, we're here at your service. We made this for you. We made this to make it convenient for you. And that's love. Also Venus. Um, yeah. And then we have uh, the yellow signs, which are activity jupiter uh the brown signs which is culture so that's where all your national parks are at uh blue which is very important because you see those everywhere that's commerce so wherever there's a gas station you'll see blue um orange which is change you'll see the people out there working on the road with the orange vests um that's mercury um and then we have uh, purple which is very very rarely seen i don't think you've i'm not have you ever seen a purple sign before damien you only see them when there's sovereign places mm. or like, I, I don't want to say necessarily Indian reservations, but there's places that exist outside of the rules and regulations that govern the land. So they're very rare and they're, and those are sovereign. Those are unique. When you see purple, that means they they're, they're separating themselves from some, from everything else that mm. they're, they're almost like they're above it, but they just exist in a different realm. Okay. Like the sun and the sky. Right. Now, the uh, opposite nature to that would be support of, of silver. And one thing that I, I kind of discovered as I was walking through the system in my head is that our guardrails on the sides of roads are made out of silver or metal. Correct. Uh, silver metal. Nailed it. Exactly. And, and that is our it's support. support. So exactly. okay, sorry, just yeah. in case we get run off the road, we have that as a support system in order to help us back on the path. That's correct. Yeah. So all these colors are, and, and when you take their na- their internal nature, they are actually uh, sound vibrations. Colors are actually sound vibrations. And in fact, if you even go and you walk in the desert or you walk in your local park or maybe you have a garden, smell the different flowers that are the different colors and you'll notice that even the smell will be within a certain vibratory uh, scent range like you'll notice that the the purple flowers smell like other purple flowers within a range and the white flowers smell like other white flowers and the red ones smell different too so every you know all these have the smells and the tastes are all within these certain frequency ranges excuse me so take that in consideration as well that's how they that's how they maintain their their dominance and their control is through controlling the harmony like 88 keys on a piano or 88 constellations they they know this as above so below balance of the eight in which we're talking about here i'm trying to bring that back around you know keep it keep it within that framework of this is the eighth episode so those are those are all important in understanding how the waves of time work but also not to forget about the particles of time the singular moments as well because that's what we're looking for in, in time as time travel progresses we're looking for the serendipitous moments those things that are different not the same mm-hmm. because think of the future as this this very efficient effective process because that's kind of what humans like to do we like to, to try to break it and then fix it and break it and fix it and, and we get this efficiency and effectiveness built out of it and then at some point we get to this you know point in the future where when we do these things they no longer work the way they used to and then so now we have new discoveries new explorations to find out okay why is it different now and this is this is what's what's curious to in time travel at least from my perspective yeah that is very curious and while you were speaking i was thinking uh, the image of the stop sign popped in my head because you mentioned the number eight and i don't believe it's any coincidence that the that the stop sign is in an octagon i mean it could (laughs) it could very well be a perfect circle but but that wouldn't represent the natural law. So what they're, what it seems to me is that by displaying the priority of the octagon, um, that they are actually 
proving to us that this is an unnatural process, that what they're doing is not in accordance to, um, to natural law, and that they are, in fact, trying to stop or control time with uh, putting up these signs and regulations and toll booths, as we've spoken about before. Beautiful. And That's exactly right. You also see other octagons, um, keeping within you know, the number eight, um, within our games. So, so like uh, the cages, the, we speak of the octagon within mixed martial arts, right? Or, or the square, which is boxing, but we don't see circles here. <laughs> um, and I'd like to touch upon that as well um, in regards to other games within our realm as a, as a form of uh, recognizing our universe hidden in plain sight type of aspects. Uh, another game would be pool. Right? We, have, uh, we have the different balls. They're all colored differently. An eight ball being the one that you were, you were supposed to capture or throw into the hole in order to win that game. Yes. Um. So let's look at it. So look at it this way. The circle represents the feminine, the divine feminine. So it's a symbol of that because all it's it's the whole, it's the all. It encompasses all things, right? So where the opposite nature would be the active masculine, the square, okay, with the points. So, and and so that circle is you don't see it in nature because that is symbolically raising up that divine feminine magnetic power aspect. In other words, it empowers you as an individual instead of you giving power to the octagon, which is technically man's law over the natural law in which you're referencing so though by having those angles it shows that we fashioned it you know mankind fashion humanity fashioned it if that if that gives you a better example on, on how that works if we if you follow any of the uh, any of those channels that that explore alternative versions of history uh, one one idea that was expressed was that um, there are no right angles that occur naturally and that any right angles or straight lines uh, would be built by by man because that is that is their control so even within our own elements if we notice um, things that are that are straight or angled as a part of you know rather than curved we'll see that it, in most cases i wouldn't say that all cases but for the majority of the time, you, you'll see them as um, as a man-made structure, as opposed to something that occurred naturally. Would you agree with that? In a sense, but with right angles, it's there's mathematical uh, language. When we, uh, not, I don't want to use the word manipulate, but when we alter the the natural world, what we discover if we do it correctly within this mathematical harmony within this language, what we end up finding is that beauty is the byproduct of this. So when you talk about ancient civilizations, you look at their architecture, you distinguish right away that this was fashioned and created by the mind of a human being, or if you believe in aliens, right? We can get into that. This is, <laughs> this is angels, aliens, and and pirates, but right. um, it, it was fashioned by something with great intelligence, let's put it that way. And yet it exists within a natural world that has a somatic harmony and pattern. So if you have actually ever look at aerial views of these, these ancient buildings built by our ancestors, and we're just the inheritors of this, right? We right. moved in. And so when you actually look at aerial views, you'll see that they're gardens and were built in this um, vibrational pattern, like somatics. Different frequencies were put into the, their sources of, yes. of beauty. And, and this is a really important aspect to show where you know what our true technology was in our past. Mm. We weren't just horse and buggy. Like, right. how do you make this stuff? With horse and you know, buggy, you can't do it. Some guy, <laughs> you know, pulling along, you know, thirty tons of limestone, 
in a horse and buggy you have to to build some massive cathedral when everybody else is living in sod houses i mean that <laughs> it's no, forget that that's ridiculous i don't know how anybody can subscribe to that narrative that's a bunch of bs if you ask me. it's okay, it's okay. Well, you, you don't question it we're all taught this it's right just, you know, we believe, I mean, we want to believe the people around us are telling us the truth. And then what we don't realize is when we get older, we realize most people just parrot what they've heard. Right. They actually never looked into anything. And then when they do look into something and then they do share that, then those are the people we listen to. Like, you know, they, they're, they've gone beyond just the, this, the, what they're told. They've actually looked into something. So we want to pay attention to those people, regardless of what it is. If it's gardening, if it's building an airplane, whatever the case may be. That's what we're looking for. We don't want to hear the, the, the parrots, the repeaters. Right, right. Absolutely. We want the, the unique the unique ones. And this is what these, these buildings show us about our past and the level that they were at before their disappearance. That's crazy to me. It's like, you know, not to, not to pick on, but you can't tell people's traveling across the desert, walks into... Uh, uh, and the first thing you really want to build is this massive temple. 1800s, when all there was was, was horse and buggy. It did. I'm just, I could go on and on. Hey, Jay Sal? <laughs> yes. Jay Sal? Yeah. You better stop because they're they're hitting the they're hitting the feed. Okay, 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 okay. I'll stop. I you get on my rant. Talk about that. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's get You're back to up. the original topic. Let's uh, let's talk about. Uh, Let's talk about time travel and how we, as 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 mere mortals, can uh, can access it <clears throat> if they'll allow us to do so. They will. They will. It's all good. Okay, because they don't. They. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> you still there? Oh, I lost you. I lost oh, you. Dang it! Are we, should we stop here? Um. Yeah, let's. Uh, I'd hate to do this, but let. Yeah. I'll stop and, here, and then yeah. we can follow up. We can follow up like much sooner, so we're not making everybody wait who are interested sure. in this. Yes. We'll talk. We'll we'll bring. We'll put up not, not necessarily a part two, but and a continuation since we're talking about time travel to the continuum, <laughs> <laughs> the space time continuum. So, yeah. so in and in spirit of that, and I'd like to close on this. Um, we we spoke about the Mobius strip. And we actually have two paths um, within the Mobius Strip, one being the sun's path over the horizon and one being the moon path over the horizon. And we spoke about the positive nature of time travel within this, this segment. And I think perhaps next segment we should speak of the negative polarity of, of time travel in our next segment. How do, you, how do you feel about that? I love that. And just to give a teaser, can we give a teaser? Sure, yeah, well, by all means. What Jay Style is referencing, if, for anybody who wants to do homework out there, is look up the Analima. And if you're a Patreon supporter, go on to the Patreon and look up the one titled Diamonds. If you listen to the Diamonds one, I show you the pattern of how everything is recorded in the Analima, which is the sun and the moon's path around us in our world. And you have access in time travel, for physical time travel in the future, we will understand how that how that pattern works and that's how we actually access the portals of time is, is understanding how the recording works how the heavens and the earth actually are in a harmony so just want to share that well we can go into that later but if you're interested in learning more look up the analema and you'll see every year how the sun and the moon's path works in our realm in our world beautiful beautiful yeah, thank you for, for touching on that. And we can definitely go into more on that into the next. Um, Damien, it's always great to talk to you. And again, you mentioned our, our Patreon. Um, and feel free to uh, subscribe to us there. And if, as always, if you have any more questions, um, please feel free to email us at elementalhypertech at gmail.com. And uh, promise that we will be back again very, very soon. So, um, you have a wonderful day, Damien. Uh, we love you all, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, everybody. Take care. <laughs>